Hello, welcome to the Art of Cooking. I'm Raymond, and today I'm going to show you how to make cha siu. Cha siu literally means fork roast. It's a really popular Cantonese cuisine. Cha siu is usually purchased from a, a siu mai establishment, which specializes in meats such as siu gai, bachi gai, tomai ga. In Cantonese, in English, it'll be soy sauce chicken, white cut chicken, and roast duck. Cha siu is sweet and savory, which is why a lot of people love them. When I go to these establishments, I always order some bao fa which is cha siu, soy sauce, chicken, duck, egg, and a little bit of vegetable. So, let's get started. Here are the ingredients you'll need. So the first thing you'll need is pork butt. No, not that kind of pork butt, but rather this, pork shoulder butt. So the pork butt is located next to the neck. This part has decent amount of fat, but it's much leaner than the neck or the pork belly. So the reason I'm using pork butt is because I gotta maintain that sexy beach body of mine. But if you want juicier, or should I say succulent meat, then the neck or the pork belly would be recommended. So here we are processing the pork butt. We only want certain parts of it to make the chashu. In chashu, you have to have the fat with it, or else it would dry out when you roast it. The fat will keep the meat moist. The other parts will be made into ground meats for dumplings, wontons, egg rolls, meat, and other stuff. So you might want to ask your butcher to help you do this. Um, but if you were to have this by yourself, or to buy the whole pork butt by yourself, this would be the way to do it. So right now we're removing the shoulder blades off of the pork butt. That you can use it for soup, whatever you like. Feed it to the dogs, they, they might like it. If you are going to use the shoulder blades uh, for soup, you can throw in some onions, leeks, uh, carrots, celery, and potatoes. You'll have yourself a hearty meal, and you can lose weight drinking soup. So here we're removing the, the part where the shoulder blade is located. This part we're not going to use because it's more lean than fatty. And this is dumpling right there. Now that is what we're going to use. To make the chop soup, we want layers of meat, fat, meat. This part is very lean, so we're not going to use that part. It would tend to dry out when roasting. So locate the part of the membrane when it's connected to the meat. Just follow the membrane, or at least close to it. It should look like a triangular shape. Again, you should probably ask your butcher to do this. This meat right there, you can use that for our other recipes, sweet and sour pork. Let him know that you want this part. This is the part that we're going to make chashu. So right here I have 2.25 pounds or 1 kilogram of pork butt. Now you want to cut it into about 1 inch or 3 millimeters in thickness across. If you cut it too thin, it will dry out during roasting. If it's too thick, it will take longer to roast. It will also shrink a little bit because of the fat melting during roasting. Also, I should mention that the fat will keep the meat moist and juicy. If you're using the hanging method, you want the fat to be on top uh, where the hook is so the fat will melt down and moisten the, the meat on the bottom. If you're not using the hanging method and you're using a rack, then you should cut this into strips about 1 inch or 3 millimeter across. So let's start the marinade process. Rub 3 fifth cup or 191 grams of sugar onto the pork and massage it little by little. Flip it over and continue to rub the sugar onto the pork. Chashu is sweet and savory, so we're adding sugar for sweetness. The reason for doing it this way is because we want the sugar to penetrate into the meat first without competing with other ingredients. Rub 1 6 or 40 ml of, of moigueiro zao. This is rose wine. It's really strong but gives off a distinct nice fragrance when done roasting. So just a little bit is all you need. Again, if you put in the wine with other ingredients, the wine doesn't really have that much of a chance to enter into the meat. So that's why we're rubbing it on with the sugar first and then marinate for at least three hours in the refrigerator. Then we put all the rest of the ingredients together and that will give that savoriness later on. As I mentioned before, if you really want a good quality meat or you want more juiciness, pork neck and pork belly are probably the best cuts to use. So now we're going to prepare the rest of the sauce. 1 teaspoon of salt, 1 teaspoon of white pepper, 1 tablespoon of ginger powder, 1 and a half teaspoon of five sp spice powder, and 1 tablespoon of garlic powder. Put it into a bowl and mix. Now add in 1 fifth or 47 grams of minced shallot. Add in 1 tablespoon of hoisin sauce, 1 tablespoon of oyster sauce, 
One tablespoon of ground bean sauce. One teaspoon of dark soy sauce. One tablespoon of sesame oil. Three eighth cup or six tablespoon or 90 milliliter of soy sauce and mix. The sauce should be like this. Now after three hours, there should be excess liquid coming out, so it's okay. So we'll pour it in the sauce and massage the pork. Now cover it up and refrigerate it for about 4 to 6 hours. You can use a Ziploc bag if you want. After 4 to 6 hours, let's roast this. I'm going to use a hook. If you don't have a hook, you can always use a rack to lay the pork on. So preheat your oven to 350 or 180 degrees Celsius. Then turn it down to 325 or 160 Celsius and cook for about 35 minutes. After 15 minutes of roasting, take it out and baste it with the marinade mixture. Now put the chashu back in and roast for 10 minutes. So while the chashu is roasting, we're going to make a glaze for the chashu. Add in half a cup or 153 grams of brown sugar and half a cup of water or 118 milliliter of water. Then add in 350 grams of maltose. Now if you don't have maltose, you can always replace that with honey. But it's not 350 grams, it'd be half of that, which is 175 grams. Me particularly, I don't like to work with maltose because it's really sticky and cumbersome. But it's not as sweet as honey. And it's much thicker, which is good for roasting. So it should be something like that. Now we're going to put it back into the oven. Now turn the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius and roast for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, turn the oven off and let it sit in there for an additional 5 to 10 minutes. So it will reabsorb the juice. Make sure the internal temperature is at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 74 degrees Celsius. And now is the time to stare at this. I have a fugasm. Look at all this juice flowing. That's what you want. I'm having fugasm right now. Is that even a word? I don't know. So now we're cutting it into individual pieces. So it should look like that. Uh, you should see this remarkable juicy piece of meat right there. I just realized something. After editing and voiceovering this video, I said too many sexual terminology like massage, rub, penetrate, foodgasm. I think I just made this into a food pornography. Maybe I should rate this video as rated R or something like warning this video contains adult contents and terminology that are not suitable for children. Viewer's discretion is advised, and put it at the beginning. Whoever thought teaching people how to cook involves so many sexual terminology? Oh gosh, what have I done? Anyways, if you have foodgasm or you're drooling over this, share your thumbs up, rate, comments, questions, fave, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.